Now let's look at four simple key steps to developing your first skills. Number one is environmental awareness. You have to get out there. You have to be present. You have to be in the moment. En environmental awareness is key. To, to understand what to use when, you have to know what is there to be used. So you have to get in the moment and develop that awareness of your environment. So number two is engaging your questioning mind. You need to be like a child. You need to say, how can I use this plant? What, what is this plant? What does it grow close to? What are its properties? How could it be used medicinally? Uh, does it have food quality? What, what type of items might I be able to make from it? Just learning something's name doesn't mean that you know that thing. So go deeper. So engage your questioning mind. Number three is practice and journaling. So number three is practice and journaling. You've got to get out there and get dirt time, get time in the woods, get time practicing and develop and perfecting these skills. Um, you also need to keep track of what you've done so as a season comes back around, you're kind of preparing, spending that winter time maybe preparing, oh, what am I gonna focus on? Well, what didn't work last year? Keep a record of it. Find out what works for you and what doesn't work and keep track of that. Um, so create your own journals and, and get some serious time with your hands in the dirt and really getting into these skills. You have to put the time in, you can't just, you know, make a bow drill kit and have the kit and say, oh, I'm, you know, I can be thrown out there and I'll use this, no problem. It doesn't work like that. You have to consistently practice. And you need to use your failures as a teacher. There is a lesson in that failure. Every time you make a bow that breaks or every time you're chipping an arrowhead that snaps, every time you work on a bow drill or fire and it doesn't go and it doesn't work, that's a lesson. Slow down and go deeper into it and see if you can figure out what that lesson is and keep track of it. Number four, community. So you could reaching out locally to museums and historical societies to find out what people in your region traditionally used. What types of stones did they nap? Now they may have imported some of that, but you'll probably find local sources there. So check museums and historical societies. Also online forums are amazing and Facebook groups uh, such as the Hunt Primitive Tribe, for example, is phenomenal. You can get in there and really you know, get in deep with other folks and get to share what you've been working on. That collective knowledge that's what connects all of us. And it makes us so much stronger as a whole. You also can start to develop your own workshops or outreaches so that you can get involved in teaching and inspiring others. That's a big part of you know, keeping track of your journey and what you've done. And it's greatly learning these first skills, relearning the skills of our ancestors. It's going to greatly enrich your family life and it will help you develop a sense of security in these trying times. Thank you so much for joining me and for becoming part of this journey.